Today we're going to talk about ChatGPT's popularity and how it's really shown us just how much AI tech out there hasn't been used for years. When we take the space of all AI capabilities that kind of exist today, and we take the interfaces that we've actually experienced that use those capabilities, um, I think the capabilities that we actually know about are fairly slim. A lot of stuff is behind a UI or behind an interface. ChatGPT is one of these kind of key examples where it shows very clearly where the AI sort of is. And that's really changed how we think about the space. And it's shown us just how many AI capabilities there are that people really haven't been looking at leveraging. Investors looking at the AI space were actually really confused why there weren't any kind of clear uses of models like GPT-3. And to some degree, that's still true for things outside of ChatGPT, but the space is growing as more people get interested in these ideas and these technologies. There's a cool nutrition tracking app that I use called ByteSnap, and the interface looks a little bit like this. It effectively has this sort of ability for you to take a photo of something that you're eating, consuming, and it'll actually remember and categorize it against previous photos that you've taken and its database of photos that exist. This is a really cool capability, and I think that it's a bit better than even what my fitness pal has. This is from a company founded in 2016. And so a lot of this technology has been around for almost 10 years, and yet we don't really see that many people leveraging it or using it. We can see just how much possibility there is even a few years ago. Clip was released by OpenAI. Clip was a model for AI kind of image recognition and image encoding that allowed us to be able to understand what images contained and what was inside of those images. Google and a lot of these other companies were releasing papers like this for years, but it's really impressive just how available this kind of techniques are and how powerful they are and how accurate they can be. And using this technology, anyone can reproduce that diet app. Now you could produce kind of something like this and actually even enhance it further now that we have like these AI assistants or this ability to understand natural language so well, we could also see this as a way to create an even better experience. Furthermore, like these sentence embeddings that we're looking at, they've been around for years. And I really didn't even understand what sentence embeddings were until we really started thinking about retrieval log meta generation or RAG and being able to have our LLMs have a corpus of information that they can refer to as they run, but this stuff was coming out in these papers in 2019. But there's still this disconnect that exists, and I, I largely think that it's between the developers who create interfaces and those who are like really responsible for building a lot of this tech. That difference is really like creating this gap in really technical availability and like what we're seeing in the market in terms of like product. Many like front end developers, designers, product folks, they don't really feel as powerful as they should feel. They don't see these technologies for what they can really do. And I don't think AI is going to help us really close this gap. This is a creative leap, a creative understanding of what's possible, an intuitive synthesis of these like technologies and these kind of creative capabilities and being able to understand how those map to the real world and real markets. A lot of that kind of like business looking data isn't something that is well understood by an AI because it's not deterministic. It's not factual in a way. We've discovered that people invest in a non-rational way. People act in a non-rational way. And so to have a rationing engine like all these LLMs are, we're not going to make that a little bit better. But we'll, So what we need to do is we need to be able to bridge this gap, take more of these AI capabilities and make them available for interfaces. ChatGPT has done a great job of kind of marketing this capability, but we need to go further and we need to look further at, at what's possible. And there's a lot of great tools for this. I think Mercury is a really exciting, awesome tool. Effectively, like you can take your like Jupyter notebooks, these kind of heavy data set pieces, and actually hook them up to user interfaces so that people can actually explore and iterate with these tools. And that'll make these technologies so much more available and so much easier to understand and interact with. Once front-end teams can actually leverage these tools so that they can see what things are capable of, it'll be incredible for innovation in the space. I think you can really look to what uh, Amelia Wattenberg is doing, like the things that she thinks about and the way that she talks about embeddings and a lot of other kind of like AI tools is really 
like this fresh take. And there's a lot of kind of designers and UI kind of specialists thinking in this space where they could think about, okay, what would it mean if we could visualize a lot of what these embeddings could tell us about things? We can create an understanding of what is a concrete versus an abstract thought. Uh, and then we can do a visual mapping of it over text. While this is totally possible from a backend perspective, the visualization of it and the way that a user can actually interface with it, that has innovative properties that unless somebody who is like front end focused understands what's possible, you really can't do. So I think over time, a lot of kind of our work is going to be bridging this gap, bridging this space and trying to help people understand how these AI capabilities are possible and like what interfaces are possible using these tools, encouraging developers, designers, product managers to be able to incorporate these into their thinking about how we build products because products are going to change really dramatically and we've got to figure out how to be ready for it. ChatGPT was just the beginning and there's already a bunch of capabilities here today that we can leverage that would make our applications incredible. If you found this interesting and you want to learn more, you can follow us on Stable Discussion. We post our thoughts there as well as our podcast where we discuss the current happenings in AI. We are look forward to around the end of the year, we're going to do a prediction for what's coming next year. Keep an eye out for that. Thanks so much.